is Alfred Bekas. I'm from Nestle Valdevalis today. Uh, I will present our paper with the title How to Optimize Over Distance Weight for the Cayman Dose Clustering Algorithm to Obtain Mobility Profiles of the Swiss Population. First, uh, I will start with a brief introduction slide. I will explain what are the messages of the paper. Uh, and then I will explain uh, the components of our methodology. First, which data source we used and which active variables that we extract from this uh, data source. And then, uh, what is multidimensional social space or another name, latent space, and how we use it. Uh, which clustering algorithm we use and what is the relationship between the, this clustering algorithm and this latent space. How they work together. Um, what is average relative width um, and how we use it. Um, how we handle optimization problem in our research, in our paper. And then I combine these uh, components of our methodology in an oval concept slide, and I will show it to you. Uh, after that, I pass uh, to our results, and I'll finish with uh, limitations and future work slide. First, uh, the paper uh, aims to obtain mobility profiles of the Swiss population. This is the, the main goal. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, describe what are mobility profiles. Basically, they are mobility dynamics or mobility patterns of a society. They contain, they, they contain different characteristic, mobility-related characteristics of population. How many kilometers people do, which mobility modes they use, <coughs> uh, how many trips they perform per day, which travel cars they have, etc., etc. So all these attributes contribute to build mobility profiles of a society. Uh, th th this is the problem, I mean, the problem is here in, in the paper obtaining mobility profiles and we propose clustering or cluster analysis as solution. And while we were obtaining mobility profiles by clustering, we thought that how can we improve our clustering results and consequently our mobility profile results, better, better quality profiles. And first we need to define what's better in here, how can we measure the quality of clusters. In general, in textbook, th there are two points. For, first. How is, uh, how, how is intercluster uh, heterogeneity? It means that how is separation among this cluster? And uh, how is intercluster compactness or homogeneity or cohesion? So, while we were obtaining these profiles uh, by clustering, we tried to recare these two points to try improve quality of our, our uh, clustering results. Uh, first, we, uh, I'd like to explain it, uh, which data source that we use. We use the mobility and transport microcensus, which is conducted by the Civil Statistical Office each five years, and uh, we use 2015 survey. We choose example some of mobility-related features from this uh, uh, microcensus data, and then based on general rules of clustering, we eliminate some of these features to uh, determine our final active variables. What are these rules? Basically, if there, uh, there, are, there are two variables uh, which are really highly correlated, eliminate one of it because they measure more or less the same thing, so it might lead to bad, cl bad clustering results. The second, remove categorical variable uh, in which one category is really dominant. Let's say it's a binary variable in which one variable occurs 95% uh, other one 5% so it, uh, remo uh, removing it uh, uh, is better because it might lead to bad clustering result and uh, if there is a categorical variable in which there are out of categories or out of levels let's say 100 levels so it might lead to uh, bad clustering results for this kind of variable it's better either removing or removing these variables or creating a new category to, let's say other and putting less frequent uh, categories or levels in this new category after these processes, <coughs> we end up with six active variables to, to cluster uh, respondents of the microcensus which represent the Swiss population. The first one is number of cars in the household. Uh, in general, 50% uh, of the population have one car in Switzerland, and two and three follow them. There are some outliers uh, which have up to nine cars, but they are really seldom. The second one is uh, has halfway travel card. As you know, halfway travel card in German, half tax in French, demi tarif, uh, provides 50% reduction of your public transportation modes. And uh, around 40% of population have this card. 
Uh, it's a bit higher in German-speaking cantons and a bit lower in French-speaking cantons. Uh, the third one is number of daily trips. Uh, quarter of the population perform uh, uh, two trips per day. We can interpret it like this. They go from home to work and turn back to their domicile. Uh, there are, as I said, there are uh, some outliers who perform up to 21 trips per day. In here, distance is not very relevant. I mean, a trip from Geneva to Zurich is counted as one trip. Also, a trip from home to a grocery is counted as one trip. A daily distance, uh, average of population uh, make 36.5 uh, kilometers per day. It's a bit higher in train users. Of course, a bit lower in soft mobility users. And model choice, uh, this is important uh, active variable. Uh, uh, basically, uh, how people in Switzerland perform their mobility activities, by which mode. Around 60% of the population perform their mobility activities by private car, uh, train and walking, all of them, uh, bus, uh, bike, e-bike and uh, uh, tram are other relevant uh, significant uh, modes. As I said, people can perform more than one trip in a day. So they might choose more than one mode uh, to perform their trips. If they do like this, we name them as multimodal, otherwise monomodal. And uh, in general, 70% of the population in Switzerland uh, are monomodal, while 30% is multimodal. At the end, our uh, active variables in here are mixed up. So, they contain both uh, categorical and numerical uh, variables. This is important why I will explain in this slide. We use these active variables to place our respondents in the microsensors in a latent space or in other name, multidimensional social space. What is latent space? It's a space basically attributes lie. Based on position in this uh, space, we can understand how similar instances. If they cross each other, we can say that they are similar. If, that, if they far away, in space, vice versa. And we use the similarity matrix or distance matrix which uh, acts like a latent space and we use it as latent space in this research. To generate this, uh, this similarity matrix, there are different matrix like Euclidean, Manhattan, etc. But not all of them can handle <coughs> mixed type data set that we have in, in this research. So this is the reason why we use Bower distance matrix because it can handle mixed type data uh, sets without any transformation. It uh, calculates p-wise distances based on each active variable separately, uh, normalize them and scale them between one and zero. At the end, it generates a symmetric uh, distance matrix which contains p-wise distances among instances. Basically, go over distance, <coughs> a point weights towards each active variable. Weight, weights in here indicate importance. At, as default, they are one. They, have all, uh, they all have the same uh, importance. But they can be tuned that we do in this research to optimize our clustering results. Then we have a latent space. We know the positions uh, which uh, instances stage uh, closer to each other, etc. Now we use a partitioning algorithm that partitions instances based on their positions in la this latent space. So we use K-medoids. Uh, Firstly, I'd like to explain what are medoids. Medoids are exemplar or uh, uh, central types of uh, clusters. They have the lowest cumulative distance towards their uh, cluster friends. So they represent their uh, clusters. Algorithm works like this. <coughs> it assigns first k medoids randomly, and then it distributes other instances towards these k medoids based on their uh, 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 positions in the latent space, and then it updates in a loop uh, medoids. And then when this up the loop is saturated, it means that root mean square error doesn't decrease anymore, it has, it stops, and then it provides medoids, uh, cluster members, and intercluster distributions. The algorithm gets two inputs. First, the k, number of cluster, so this is a handicap. Uh, number cluster should be uh, pre-specified, and of course the latent uh, space or positions in a multidimensional social space. So we don't know the k, optimal number of cluster, but there are some quality measures or uh, fitness measures 
uh, that can give us an idea about what is the optimal number of clusters. For this purpose, we use average flat width uh, metric. Basically, it measures how well an instance is matched with its own cluster. Or in other thing, how is compactness intercluster and how is separation intercluster. So through this uh, metric, we can estimate what is the optimal number of clusters. Basically, we try different k values in an interval, <coughs> and the k value that brings the highest average related width score is appointed as the optimal number of cluster. And once we obtain this optimal number of cluster, uh, in this research, we try to improve its average related width score. Now, we know the optimal number of cluster that has the highest average related width score, and in the second step, we would like to improve its uh, score to increase the uh, quality of our cluster. To this end, we tuned default go rates. As I said at the beginning, uh, as default, all uh, active variables have the same importance, which means that they influence distribution of instances in the latent space in the same uh, power or in the same weight. But we would like to tune this uh, default go weights to improve our clustering result. I, <coughs> uh, I combine these components in an overall concept. It consists of two steps. In the first step, uh, we obtain the optimal number of clusters. Blue lines in here contribute the first step, red lines contribute the second step, uh, black ones are neutral, so they contribute the form. In the first step, we have data, we obtain the active variables, and we place instances in data set uh, in a latent space by help of lower distance matrix, and then k that works on it, and within a loop, this dashed blue line in here is a loop, within a loop different k-values are uh, tested, and the k-value that brings the highest uh, average related width score is appointed as the optimal number of clusters. In the second step, uh, right now we know the optimal number of clusters and its average related width score. We try to improve, in the second step, this score even more. In a dashed red line here, we try different uh, goer weights configurations. And the, the configuration that improves this score the most is appointed as the optimal weight. So at the end, this overall concept provides us first, the optimal number of cluster, second, optimized over weights. And after we obtain these things, we recluster instances in the microsensors, and so we end up uh, uh, more uh, precise and higher quality clusters. These are our results that we obtained. As I said in the first step, we tried different uh, k values in an interval, and we looked their average to that width score. And as we can see in here, 13 seems the most optimal one because it has the highest score. Uh, so we appoint 13 as the optimal number of clusters. So we looked also the second best as control. In here, it's uh, 12. Uh, after optimization, we compare uh, their score again whether they are improved or not. Uh, and in the second step, we optimized <coughs> uh, default goal rate. At the beginning, they were one. As we can see in the table, some of them change dramatically while some of them stay steady. Uh, in here, we put a border, uh, so they can be at most three. So upper bound is three, uh, default is one, so they can vary between one and three. Um, uh, after we obtained these weights, we reclustered instances and we uh, looked their average to that width score, I mean the 13 clusters average to that width score, and it is 0.84 after optimization. And before optimization, it was, uh, I mean the, mm, with the default uh, goal rates, it was 0.74. So there is a significant improvement. We looked also the control variable, the second best. It's also significantly uh, improved, and it's still less than the, the most optimal one. I mean, still less than 30. So, at the end, we can say that by help of this optimization, by tuning over this weight, we obtain more compact uh, and more separated clusters. We improve intracluster homogeneity or cohesion, and intercluster separation or heterogeneity uh, by help of this optimization. And uh, these, these are our clusters, 
um, bubbles represent uh, each cluster and ready here uh, size of uh, the cluster. Uh, we obtained four private car users, medoids, I mean the representative of clusters. They differ each other by different attributes. One has hardware, one is making uh, more kilometers than others, uh, one is multimodal, one is performing more uh, trips than others, etc. Et so they are all private car users, but they have different other active variable uh, values. <laughs> After that, uh, we obtained two walkers, medoids. One is multimodal, uh, uh, one is monomodal. Multimodal one has also half layer travel time. Uh, two train users, uh, they do really uh, significantly more kilometers than others. Uh, both have half layer travel count, train users. One is multimodal, one is monomodal. Two bike and bike users, they make significantly higher kilometers than walkers. One is multimodal, one is monomodal. Uh, two bus users, uh, they do more or less the same kilometer with the uh, bike and e-bike user. And one tram user, uh, the Medoid lives in a city center where tram exists. He has a half way travel card and also he is a multimodal. So limitations, uh, as I showed in the previous slides, uh, we tried k values in an interval, so the between 1 and 15 in this research, so it's a limitation there might be better k values out of these boundaries but due to uh, computational complexity we had to put a boundary and we put uh, 50 and also uh, boundary for the optimized uh, goal rates it is, as I said, we put uh, 3 as the upper bound uh, but after optimization we saw that some of uh, active variables uh, optimized ways are in order so if we increase this uh, boundary upper bound, this weight might increase as well. So these are limitations and we had to put these limits uh, or boundaries due to computational complexity and computational time. And in the future we would like to challenge these limitations, of course, and uh, we would like to generate a synthetic population for Switzerland by help of these medoids. Basically right now we know medoids, intercluster, schist or narrow down uh, marginal and conditional distributions, and in the future we would like to add white noises around attributes of medoids within intercluster uh, distributions and we generate a uh, synthetic population through this process. And right now we know uh, intercluster distributions and medoids, attributes of medoids. In the future we would like to do some policy extra extractions. We try different uh, uh, scenarios and we look how medoids and or how size of these clusters change based on uh, these policies. And questions. <laughs>